tam tú galeriu na začiatku, hej, tak? Uh-huh. Dobre, uh, ako stridna už beží, uh, stridna beží, tak vlastne ja ti len poviem, že sa presneme... Až, kedy mám začať rozprávať, mi povedz, hej? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. A táto kamera ma bere, hej, táto, čo je predo mnou? Áno, ale keď chceš, Dobre. keď chceš rozprávať na divákov, tak hej, na tam. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Loga ste dali, hej, že možno. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you on our final workshop of the series of workshops we organized with with our Norwegian partner, Urban Space Lab, in the framework of uh, Slovak-Norwegian Cultural Matching Project. We are happy we we can take this opportunity to wrap up uh, the project, to speak about what was important to us and, uh, and to, uh, to, to, to show you the possibilities that we discovered during the project implementation. But before uh, going into, into the project and into the workshop, I would like to uh, give you a few technical details. As you probably are following us on Facebook, on Facebook you can, uh, you can watch the, the, the event in a Slovak language. If you wish to switch to English language, please go to our YouTube channel. Uh, we will also uh, give the floor for questions, so please use the Slido uh, to write your questions. To our speakers or to the event, we will take floor, uh, we will take time to answer the question as they will arise after every speaker speaking. Very well. So let me first uh, say a few words about our project. I think the best thing when we have the final final event, uh, the best thing is to share our experience. We have uh, how we set up the project, how we implement the project, what we have learned about uh, about the project, about the Slovak-Norwegian cultural cooperation and how this cooperation can be funded. Throughout the workshops we, we had, we've been s- through different topics. We have, uh, we have had architects, we have had dancers, we spoke about uh, the city making, participatory city making, we spoke about the inclusive culture. And so today we would like to speak about how to set a project, how, what are our experiences and how to fund a cultural project supported from funds uh, that would bring together the Slovak and Norwegian partners. So let me let, let me start with our experience. One about one year ago, we uh, we saw there was a call published about the cooperation and cultural field, and uh, we in a creative industry of Košice have asked ourselves: Do we know somebody in Norway? Can we set a project? And the answer was no. So what we, what we did, we wrote a little introduction of our, comp- of our NGO, what are our priorities, what we, uh, what we search, what kind of partners we search for a project. And we, w- and we sent the email to the Norwegian embassy in uh, Slovakia in Bratislava. About one month later, we received a reply from um, from, from a Norwegian institution uh, responsible for the EA grants, uh, 
with a, with a, with a list of five institutions that would match our partner search in Norway. So we again uh, sent an email to, to these institutions and uh, we received a reply from Urban Space Lab, uh, whose founder and uh, uh, whose founder, Lori, Lori Vostel, is uh, here today with us. And I would like to ask her about her, her thoughts when she first uh, saw the email. Lori, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Dobra, Martin. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, Vordana, how do that? Uh, dobra, uh -huh. a ti? Yay, hard that bra. Okay, this is something we, we learned in, uh, in, in the, throughout our cooperation. Uh, so, Lori, please, could you just give us f shortly few thoughts about how we said, or what were your thoughts when you received our email? Yes, um, I just received this wonderful email from uh, Martin and Marco asking if I was interested in um, talking about um, international uh, collaboration. And um, so the first thing I, of course, did was to Google Tsike and to see who they were. And their digital profile was just amazing. And they had some really interesting projects online. And um, a lot of contemporary artists that were profiled, which I thought was very interesting. And they also worked with something called Living Labs, which is a method that I also work with. And I thought we had a lot in common as creative industries. Um, and I was, we chatted together. Uh, we had a Zoom meeting quite early in the process, and we just kind of connected. It was a good, uh, it was good chemistry, and we had a lot of similar ways of approaching um, city making and culture, which was perfect for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I just was very curious about what Slovakia, what kind of issues uh, do they care about working with culture and city making in uh, Kosica. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, okay, thank you very much, Lori. So maybe you are in the, in the same shoes as we were uh, one year ago and you have no partner. You would like to, to, uh, to, to set up a project with somebody in Norway. So please, you can just take our route as we took and, uh, and, uh, and write an email to, to the Norwegian embassy in Slovakia. Okay. Then we, uh, we applied, and I would like to share now a few, few information about, about the fund we, we used uh, for, for our application. Uh, you might be aware that uh, this project is also uh, uh, is funded, basically, by the Fund for Bilateral Relations, which is one of the funds and one of the programs of the EEA grants uh, program, which runs in all European countries. And it's uh, supported by Iceland, Liechtenstein, and Norway. Yes, uh, this EA grants uh, program has basically two funds. One is culture, and one is uh, the fund for bilateral relations. Unfortunately, we are at this time. Uh, we are in a in a period where the programming uh, of or programming period of one uh, fund or one programming period is going to an end. And there are no calls in the program culture. But as for the Fund for Bilateral Relations, you can expect a call by the end of the year, probably in October. It will be published uh, on, uh, in Slovakia. We, we can find it on the, on the Slovak uh, web page of the Ministry of uh, Invest uh, on of investment and informatization on Slug Republic. And uh, basically, the, the call will be uh, about for the projects up to 50,000 euros. Uh, there are two, two conditions in this call. One is that you have to have a Norwegian partner for Slovak applicants. And the second is that, uh, that uh, it has to be the role of both partners in the project has to be balanced. As for the activities, in our call, we, we had to go online because of the COVID situation in, in, in Europe. But uh, for, for the call, which, which is coming, the first information say that it, will be, uh, it could be done physically. And uh, there you can organize seminar conferences, uh, study trips, studies, data collection, information activities, etc. OK. So this was for the funding scheme we used for funding our project. 
And the good news is really that uh, this funding scheme will be uh, again available by the end of this year, probably in the month of October. All right, let me now uh, go to our first speaker. But before doing that, I would like to introduce, we have a very special guest today with us. His name is Thor, Thor Erling Nas. And he's a, he lives in, in Norway. He's a comic book artist, writer, musician, and graphic recorder. And he, he will have a very special role in our workshop today, but I would like to give him floor. Tor, could you tell us please what will you do during the workshop? I will uh, try to make a summary of uh, what is said and, uh, and, uh, and done in, in this workshop. And um, uh, as, as you said, I'm, um, I'm original. Eh? Um, comic book artist, so I, I like to draw and tell stories. And usually I uh, put up a big paper on the wall but, uh, and draw on it, but here uh, I do it on my iPad. So uh, I started with making a title of uh, what, what, we, what, what we'll be talking about. So um, okay. hopefully uh, yeah, all, the, all this big paper will will be uh, filled with, uh, with, uh, with the story of what has happened today. Okay, That's thank you very much. <laughs> yes, great. So we are looking forward to stay with us uh, till the end of, uh, of our workshop. Uh, you will not only learn about the, the funding possibilities that uh, there are uh, for uh, the cultural cooperation between uh, Slovakia and Norway, but you will see also uh, the, the look of an artist at our workshop. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you our first speaker. Her name is Jona Magieritska, and she's an associated professor in drama and theater at the University of South Eastern Norway. She works with artistic research throughout installation, video, art, and sound. She has been researching participatory strategies using contemporary art and relational aesthetics as an approach and has a great passion for including and involving people of every age and contributors in her artworks. Ladies and gentlemen, Joanna, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Martin, and thank you for the invitation. Yes. Uh, well, I'm in a way um, a ripple effect of this great project uh, because I attended a by incident and the webinar uh, number, number three on the 7th of April. And as a follow up to that, uh, I had the opportunity to join um, a guided tour here at Norton. Uh, connected to uh, development of a project uh, uh, that is about developing the centers uh, of the city. Uh, and we walked about in the Jürgen style architecture part of the town um, and did, um, uh, I was asked to do uh, something um, uh, so that to include uh, the participants and made a digital platform that they could share their, their thoughts and their uh, ideas. And I took pictures uh, during the, the workabout uh, with a, a bit special um, uh, approach and made a film uh, that connected all of those uh, uh, parts uh, with text uh, based upon what uh, people wrote on the digital platform. Um, so this is what I would like to present to you first. Uh, so uh, Martin, if you could um, yes. put the film on, it would be great. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.
Nothing and everything shares. Music, sound, the car, do something possible. When possible, two chairs meeting, playing, the car passing by. Where is Victoria? What will happen here? Complete list of pictures. Walls burning so together. If you sit, Completely still. Maybe you will spot a cat playing a tune with the stars. To the center of seeing and not and being seen. Open. Let me take your hand. Do it. Follow me to the center of everything and nothing. Open. Do we speak together? Do we speak the same language? How do we find each other through the landscapes of the future? Cars and people. Please hold my hand and walk with me. Yes, um, and well, using this film and uh, using the experience of the guided tour in the uh, center of Northern, I've started to talk to people around me, mostly people I know from before, but it was extremely um, uh, engaging and opening uh, up uh, for new ideas and approaches and thoughts. And some of them I've collected, uh, but it has been a great way to uh, open a dialogue about what we wish for the center of the city. And um, at the same time, um, I presented an idea that I had um, at the end of the walkabout about making a showroom in the center of the city. I would like to share that idea with you because I think uh, it's a good approach to involve uh, the citizens of, of a city in, in a project like that, to have them own it. Uh, and if you think about uh, Norwegian um, building projects with apartments, there's always a showroom uh, uh, where you can go in and see uh, how the apartments are going to look like. And I thought about that uh, the whole project here at Noton should have this showroom in the center of the city where uh, citizens can come and uh, see what they have answered in the questionnaires, and meet people that can uh, talk about the project with them uh, as well as uh, share more thoughts and ideas and some of them could be uh, represented uh, as in real life or some of them um, uh, can maybe uh, interpreted uh, poetically uh, or artistically and um, I was thinking that it is very important to have some questions asked and uh, questions uh, that are important to everybody and uh, in many different ways. And one of the persons that I've talked to uh, talk, uh, told me about the idea of, of making hidden spaces within the city center, uh, which you have to find where you find something interesting artistically. Uh, or just thematically about the city. And uh, another one told me about um, that in the center uh, of the city, or actually the whole city, needs more benches. 
I didn't think about that, uh, mostly because there are sitting places around, but not in the way maybe that you enjoyed them a lot. And it's not a critic, it's just um, observation from this person. And I thought uh, further on that idea. Um, so the, here is a poetic um, interpretation of that, because I thought, what lovely idea to think about um, inviting artists to make benches all around, not on the city, especially in the center. And benches with ideas and concepts and with uh, uh, special meanings. And uh, here's a, a little list of what it could be. Uh, some of them very obvious and others not that obvious because uh, we always need a bench for lovers, that's for sure, but maybe also for being alone. That could look uh, completely different. And how about a bench for um, a di dining with 16 of members of your family? A bench to think long thoughts with or on? or a bench that you only rest on for five seconds. That will be a challenge, how to make a bench that you want to sit on, but then leave immediately. A bench to plan a revolution, I think that's important. Or a bench to connect with other places around the world. To exchange books, or a message, or a photo, to take a nap on. Another bench with a view, that's very obvious. Or a bench completely hidden. A bench that le looks like a mystery chest or a riddle. And of course, a bench that you can make amazing selfies on with the great light and some background, you know. A bench that will surprise you. A bench that you can sit on and laugh out loud, or shed tears on, a bench you can make a wish on, or move around with, a bench to listen to, or maybe a bench that will answer you. Thank you very much. This is a bit of a, a different uh, approach to this uh, webinar, but I hope uh, the very uh, uh, nice synergy that happened during exactly this uh, webinar uh, that I attended and uh, your great project uh, will be a bit of an inspiration uh, for others to join uh, in different ways. And thank you very much for the opportunity yes. in many ways. Thank you very much. It was Joanna Magieretka. If you would like to ask her questions or uh, me or somebody uh, from our speakers, please use the Slido that uh, will ap appear shortly on the, on the, on the screen. Uh, you, can, uh, you can ask us the questions. Yes, uh, this project was, was uh, our project was about uh, exchanging. And when we were, we were uh, thinking together with uh, Lori, about uh, about uh, the program for the next workshop we were always thinking about uh, who would be uh, an interesting speaker and uh, how they could make projects together when we invite the slovak and norwegians together in one workshop and then we will create a, a space after the official workshops that you, uh, that are still and you can uh, you can see them at, uh, at, at on our uh, facebook page or or youtube channel they are all recorded there but uh, we wanted to, 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 to find new project ideas, new project partners that would take on the cultural cooperation. So, Joanna, this was, uh, this was I think, a very great uh, outcome of uh, one of our se seminars because you joined us uh, and, uh, and uh, it was about uh, participatory uh, city making. And uh, thank you for your uh, view on the benches. I <laughs> will see the benches now in different uh, light when I walk uh, around. And this also can be a good, a good project idea for, um, for, uh, for the future. If, uh, if uh, somebody is watching us and uh, we would like to, 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 to more elaborate more on, on this idea of benches uh, in the city, 
what they can be. So uh, we can put you in contact with Joanna and you can, you can work together. Okay, thank you very much. We don't have questions now, for now. So let me move to our next speaker, Heidi, Heidi, Heidi Al Yubori. She works as an international consultant for Westfold and Telemark City Council, working with information and knowledge sharing about European development programs. She has a bachelor in, degree in political science from the University of South Eastern Norway. Heidi, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Yes, and the uh, floor is yours. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You can hear me well, right? Ye yes, it's yeah, good. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I just want to say thank you for inviting me and thank you for introducing me, Martin. Um, yeah, I can uh, just share that. I prepared a presentation so I can just share it already now and then I can do just a second. Can you see it? Uh, Play it on the full screen, please. Yeah. Can you see it? Yes, we can see it, but uh, please uh, just play it uh, as as mm -hmm. as a presentation. Okay, because we okay. see it in the PowerPoint still. Oh, you see yeah, it? Yeah, now it's good. Now it's good. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yes, perfect. please. So, so you see it as a PowerPoint now, right? Yes, it's good. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Uh, yeah, um, again, thank you very much for, uh, for inviting me here. Uh, I will. D I work as a consultant for Westfall and Termark yeah, County Council, and I work with international cooperation with two other colleagues. Um, today, I thought I was gonna like I'm gonna talk very briefly about what international uh, cooperation role is and uh, what uh, EU's program we are most active in. Um, and I will mostly focus on EU's Creative uh, Europe uh, program, because I think this would uh, benefit uh, mostly for you guys. I'm moving on just a second there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the first ever strategy that was established after the merger of Westfall and Telmark County Council was the International Strategy of 2023, uh, 2030, I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, and it was established in uh, uh, June 2020. Um, very briefly about the strategy, it's how it's, it's the strategy is divided into four main points, uh, priority, priorities, which are uh, uh, the following, as you can see on the screen. Uh, I will mainly focus on priority number four, which are project work. Uh, the County Council use EU's cooperation programs to improve and develop existing tasks and to straighten our region's goal. Um, so I will talk about some of the EU's program we are mostly active in. The first one is INTRAG. INTRAG is the EU's program that promotes social and economic uh, integration across borders through regional uh, cooperation. It aims to tack, uh, jointly tackle uh, common challenges and find shared solutions in uh, fields such as health, environment, uh, research, education, transport, sustainable energy, and much more. Uh, the Intrag uh, program have many sub programs and projects, and um, the ones shown on the screen are the ones we are uh, we participate most in. Um, yeah, moving on, another project, another program is uh, uh, Rasmus Plus, uh, which is EU's program that support education, training, youth, and sport in Europe. And the new program for uh, 2021 to 2027 has an estimated budget of uh, 26.2 billion euro. Well, uh, I will, and the national contact points are the following. At the top is the Norwegian contact point and at the bottom is the Slovakian contact point. I will not go further into this to save time, so moving on. <laughs> Um, Horizon Europe is another program we participate in. Uh, Horizon Europe is the world's largest funding program 
for research and innovation with a budget of 95.5 billion euro. Um, the program is structured after three pillars and have many sub programs under each pillar. And of course, under uh, each pillar, they have many calls in different fields. Uh, the program is open for everyone. Um, and even though this program is uh, mainly for research and innovation, the creative and uh, cultural sector can still benefit uh, from it. An example um, that uh, can still like benefit from the cultural and creative sector is uh, the Hyperion project from 2019. Uh, the Vestpol and uh, Terma County Council participated in the previous program known as Horizon 2020 with the project Hyperion EU uh, project. And uh, the project aims to research and find tools that could help us better uh, to prevent uh, damages caused on uh, cultural heritage monuments or, and or sites. Um, that is one example how to use it uh, when it comes to culture and creative uh, sector. Those are the contact points. The top is the Slovakian and the bottom is the Norwegian contact points. And finally, we have the Creative Europe. Uh, the Creative Europe is a US program for cultural and creative uh, sector, and it has an estimated budget of 2.4 uh, billion euro. Uh, the program invests in action that reinforce cultural diversity and responds to the needs and challenges of the culture and creative sector. Uh, the Creative Europe uh, program is divided into three stands, the cultural stand, the media stand, and the cross-cultural stand. Um, the cultural stand takes up of 33% uh, uh, of the total budget. And um, it's uh, the culture stand support a wide range of uh, culture and creative sectors, such as architect, culture, heritage, design, literature, and publishing, and music, performing art, and etc. Um, the uh, shown on the screen are some of the available funding opportunities. Uh, the European Cooperation pro uh, Project uh, involves uh, organization in cultural and creative sector, and the project is divided into three uh, types of project, depending on how many partners you have. Um, the high uh, the I uh, Protunus uh, project have uh, is one of the few projects that uh, individual can apply by themselves without having to go through an organization. Uh, it's a project that connects international artists, creators, and cultural professional and support international collaboration amongst all countries by providing funding to individual to go abroad for a short term of uh, period. Uh, then the media stats takes up 58% uh, uh, of the budget and promotes uh, and supports the European film and audiovisual uh, industry to develop, distribute and promote European work, all while well considering today's uh, digital environment. Uh, the sub program have, uh, is divided into four cluster and each cluster have many projects and collaborators. Um, I, I will not go further into this, uh, afraid of the time, so moving on. The cross-sector uh, have uh, um, takes up 9% of the total budget, uh, and this sub-program uh, aims to reinforce collaboration between different uh, cultural and creative sectors in order to help them address uh, the common challenges they face uh, and find uh, innovative solutions. Um, the, uh, this can be using Creative Innovation Lab, they can achieve that goal. Um, the cross-sector stand also offer funding opportunities for the new media uh, sector. <clears throat> and those are the national contact points. And uh, we also have, you can uh, a Facebook page, so you can find us uh, there where we share information about the international cooperation and much more in both Norwegian and English. And our website is mainly in Norwegian. All. Thank I you. Just, uh, I'm sorry, I had to speed through because I was so afraid of time. 
So I was like speeding through it. No, it's very good. Thank you very much. It was uh, Heidi Al Yaburi, um, yeah. the, the consultant for uh, Westfall and Telemark City Council. Thank you very much. It was very interesting to hear that, uh, that uh, Norway is part of all these uh, European programs, even though not officially part of the European Union. And uh, we can uh, apply together and uh, work on projects together that uh, are supported from, uh, from these uh, from this funds. You can ask the questions uh, using the Slido. Again, we would like to draw your attention. If you have any questions to, to, to Heidi or to our previous speakers or to me, uh, please uh, write it. Go to Slido and uh, you can see it now on the screen. Uh, use Slido to ask the questions. Thank you very much. Uh, I have one question um, and, um, before we, we go on with, uh, with our uh, next speaker. Heidi, um, if uh, somebody would be interested in, uh, in uh, writing a project or uh, searching a partner in, uh, in uh, your county, how, how does it work? What's the usual, usual, usual steps to take? Uh, if you can elaborate a little more on this. Well, on our counter, we, uh, we offer uh, advice and uh, guidance for people that uh, want to participate in the EU program. So they can just contact us and then we can help them with uh, finding uh, the perfect EU program for them. Either if they have just an idea and they are not sure which program it is, or if they actually have a partner and have a project in, in mind and they want to go further, then we can support them. Uh, with that. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have different um, friends and colleagues in uh, Europe, so we can help them find partners if they don't have a partner mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this would be a nice opportunity for, uh, for also Slovak institution, artists, creative people. If you would like to, to make a project uh, through Creative Europe, uh, you can contact uh, Heidi or you can contact us at uh, Creative Industry Košice and we will uh, help you to contact Heidi then uh, so that you can, uh, you can uh, search for partners because partners are very important in uh, the European projects. Very good. We don't have questions. Uh, so let me, let me go on with, uh, with our program. You always can ask questions al also later on. Just use the Slido and uh, we will come back to your question even if it's connected to the previous speakers. Great. My, my ne next speaker is Anna Maria Travničková. And she's been working in a Chopa gallery and Kair Košice artist re in residence for four years. She's responsible for the productions and social media in the framework of residency program Kair. She's working on her master's uh, on Department of British American Studies uh, on uh, Europe University of Pavel Josef Shafari in Košice, where she earned a bachelor degree from Gender Studies and Culture. Anna Maria, please, the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, just give me a second and I'll share my screen. Uh, so, hello everybody. As you could hear, my name is Anna Maria Travnichkova and today I would like to talk to you about a residency program, Kair Košice Artists in Residence. So, uh, Kair was established actually more than 10 years ago. Uh, it was established in 2011 and it was as a part of Košice being the cultural capital of Europe. And well, uh, at that time we were part of Creative Industry Korsice. And uh, in 2015 we uh, became independent. And also with that, uh, our look changed a little bit and also our focus. So uh, we changed of our logo. Uh, we also included one of the symbols which is uh, linked with Korsice. And it is a feather of a crow, and Košice are linked with this uh, bird, and we have quite a lot of crows here, so if you visit us, you'll see. <laughs> and well, uh, with the change of our local, uh, we also 
change the focus of our residencies. At first, the artists who were here on a residency, they were focusing more uh, on the city. However, during the, the recent years, we decided to change our focus a little bit more on the social aspect. And we started to focus more on the community, on the co-living, co-working, but also coexistence, cooperation, and co-experience. And also, because of the pandemic, we also focus on the topic of COVID-19 in our residencies. And well, uh, right now, I would like to tell you a little bit more about our space. So as I said, in 2015, we became independent and we changed our space. We came to a new space. And actually, we are not the only organization here. We are co-sharing our space with another NGO, Shopak Gallery. And here in this space, we have our two studios, uh, which our residency artists can share uh, and use during their stay here. Usually, we have residencies for two or three months. And this is quite uh, very important for us because uh, we realized in the last years that short residencies do not make sense for us because the artists uh, are unable to create something in uh, such a short time and also they are not able to connect with the local communities. And well, what do we offer to artists who are in our space? Uh, we offer them curatorial support. We also try uh, to connect them with the local cultural scene and also we try to connect them with uh, local communities and also we offer them production and uh, PR support. So as you can see, our residencies are guided. And well, of course, we also expect something from the artists. And uh, here you can see one of uh, our formats of events. Uh, here you can see Open Studios Night. Uh, during this event, our artists are presenting uh, themselves to the local communities. They are talking about their previous work, also on what they are working at the moment. And also during this evening, uh, the people who attend this event, they can see uh, the studios of our artists and see actually on what they are working on. Besides Open Studios Night, uh, also our residents have to give uh, either way an individual presentation or a workshop so they can connect more to the local communities. And in the end of their residency, um, they have to deliver a final presentation or exhibition. And uh, what is also very important for us is a compulsory attendance during the residency. So our residents are able to go for a short trip during their residency, but they cannot leave the space for uh, one or two weeks or more, because it would not make any sense for it. Well, and uh, actually, how does our residency work? So um, the residencies and also the selection process is based on open calls, and our residents are bilateral. So this means that we have partners also abroad. Um, in the past, we had collaborations from, with organizations from, for example, J Japan, Poland, Hungary, uh, also Ukraine, and many more. And well, the selection process works like that. Like for example, uh, Slovak artists can apply for the residency abroad, and uh, we make a pre-selection, and then in the end, the abroad uh, residency partner uh, chooses the final person who is going to attend the residency, and also it works the other way. So we, if we have, for example, a person from abroad applying to Košice, our uh, partners abroad will make a pre-selection and then we will choose in the end the final person who will attend. And well, what is also very local, uh, very important for us is to have local collaboration. So in the terms of final presentations of our artists, we like to not only work in our space, but also to collaborate with other centers. For example, here you can see art gallery in uh, the Bachka Kulturfabrik, which is one of the cultural hubs here in Košice. 
But also in the past, we had collaborations, for example, like with Kino Usma, Kasarnia Kultur Park, uh, Bruno Gallery, and many more. Also on the local level, uh, last year we had a project with ETP uh, Slovakia and Transit SK. And uh, the focus of this residency was on Roma communities. And two of our artists were working with uh, kids from uh, one settlement, uh, Lumi Gevet, and also with children from a uh, foster home. And uh, the final outcome was actually a play. So this is one of our uh, local collaborations. And uh, on more bigger uh, aspect, for example, we worked on a project Borderline Offensive, which was a three-year uh, long project. And uh, here, the focus of this uh, collaboration was actually on immigration. And here, uh, we had the artist for 10 days actually in our space, and it was very quick pace. And also during this time, we realized that really we want to make a longer residence, it's more than 10 days. Uh, one of our other collaborations, oh, actually, in this collaboration, Borderline Offensive, we had one artist, Sisa Schalk, who created a card game called We the People. And actually, it had outcome on the local level. Here you can see uh, one of the theaters from Košice, Divadlo na Peronie, and they have uh, transformed this card game into uh, interactive uh, play, interactive performance. And well, we the people tells a story of uh, a land Clida. And the people right now, they are uh, during the presidential elections and they actually uh, vote in this play. So this was uh, one of the really, really great projects. And I think very important because the people could um, think about what is going on, not only in this fictive land, but also in their own. Uh, one of our other collaborations uh, is a collaboration with Creative City Košice. And uh, this year is the fourth year that we are doing a new media art residency. And um, this is one of the outcomes uh, by a Spanish uh, author, Mark Villanova. And besides these collaborations, we also had last year a collaboration uh, with Palestine and Slovenia. And here you can see one of the outcomes from the Hydra phase project. And here um, the main focus of the residency was on interconnectedness and also on the community and uh, many of the previously mentioned topics. And well, if we move on to the financing, as we are NGO, um, each year we have uh, different strategies and we have to apply uh, for funding and well our main uh, source is uh, Slovak Arts Council but of course we have to fund ourselves also locally so our other partners are for example City Košice, Creative Industry Košice and of course uh, also Goethe Institute and more on the bigger level uh, and on the bigger projects we were uh, financed by, uh, for example, Visegrad funding, also Annaland Foundation, or Creative Europe. And well, what is quite uh, important to say in these bigger projects, uh, most of them uh, work on the base of reimbursement. And for us, as we are uh, NGO, it is very unsustainable, and we need for bigger projects uh, partners. And so you would see uh, also what do we offer uh, in terms of our residency uh, for our artists. So here you can uh, see an example. This is an example of a three month residency in our space. And what we offer to our artists is a free accommodation and studio. Uh, also a honorarium, which is approximately 600 to 700 per person monthly. And of course we, uh, cover some travel costs. Uh, we, of course, have some maximum in it. And also, we uh, try to cover material costs within the residency. So I hope that this was an uh, interesting talk for you. And thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh,
Thank you, Anna Maria Travnichkova. Thank you very much for your presentation. Yes, ex indeed, during the, our project, when we were uh, exploring the cooperation among artists, how this, this uh, domain works, how the artists cooperate, how could they cooperate in the Slovak and uh, Norwegian uh, framework, we found out that uh, the residencies are definitely one of the uh, s strong instruments that, avail that are, there are available for this type of cooperation. And uh, so this is the reason why we are also in, uh, happy that you, you presented uh, the great work you're doing here in Košice. Uh, I have, I have, I have uh, a question. Do you, uh, do, you, um, do you have a partnership with similar organizations in, uh, a, abroad? Uh, yes, yes, of course. So our residencies are mostly based on partnerships uh, with other organi organizations abroad. For example, this year we started with a residency with Ukraine and there we have a partner, Nazar uh, Wojtovich Art Residence. Mm -hmm. And also we have uh, partners in other mm -hmm. countries. So do, do you organize like an exchange, exchange programs? where you, yeah. you sent uh, uh, artists from Košice to some other country and the artists come from... Mm -hmm. Could you tell us uh, something more about the deadlines? Or if somebody would like to apply for, uh, for residency, you, you already... Uh, uh, but I, did, I don't remember if I saw a deadline there uh, on, on, the, on the screenshot. Mm, in the, in no, the presentation. You see that, but uh, for example, right now we have uh, two open calls out. One of them is for the new media art residency, and another open call is focused on the Arab queer heritage. So it's quite two different uh, topics. And uh, usually we have, uh, for example, like one month uh, during which the artists can apply. So, for example, right now we uh, release the new media art residency open call and the artists have the deadline I believe till the 20th of July to apply mm -hmm. for that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And uh, where, uh, okay, before I ask my questions, I have still s uh, one or two questions, but I would like to ask uh, our, our audience if you would like to ask your question, please use the Slido. Uh, we would like to draw your attention back to our Slido uh, hashtag where you can uh, ask the questions. I have received uh, also a question already on a Slido. Uh, it's concerning the, the Russian invasion to Ukraine. And so if you could tell us, well, I, have, I will add to this question. First one, what, uh, from what countries uh, did you receive artists already? And my sub-question is then how this uh, invasion influenced your cooperation with Ukraine. We heard already that you have somebody uh, from Ukraine, but if you could elaborate more on this. Mm -hmm. Of course. So actually this year we have started residencies uh, in the beginning of February, I believe. And we started with a Ukrainian residency. So we had two Ukrainian artists. Uh, and actually, uh, approximately two weeks after they arrived to Kosice, the conflict in uh, Ukraine uh, happened and started. And um, actually, this was a really uh, difficult time for us because we had to learn how to approach this topic. And well, after this residency and during this, uh, we have decided to change our scheduled this year and we have postponed some of the residencies which were supposed to be after this one and we have uh, once again invited Ukrainian artists into our space. Right now we have two Ukrainian girls, Polina Sherbina and Kristina Melnik and also for our summer residency we have once again decided to postpone uh, one of our, our previews from the program and once again, we are going to have uh, girls from Ukraine in our yeah. space. So yeah. at least uh, this is a way how we can uh, help during this time as an organization. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. And concerning the, the co collaboration with uh, different countries, what uh, countries uh, 
you cooperate with uh, what uh, from which countries uh, the artists have arrived to Košice? If you just can give an overview just for our mm -hmm. audience, yes. Well, uh, mostly in, uh, in the recent uh, years, uh, we had artists from Poland, Ukraine, Hungary, but also from Germany, and a few years before that from uh, Georgia, Japan, and I think that also from uh, some artists from Scandinavian countries, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. great. And my last question is uh, where, uh, where artists can find information about uh, the calls? Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that's a very important question. Uh, they can find it on our website, which is uh, kair.sk. And also, I believe uh, you can find information about us on the website of Creative Industry Košice. And right now, also, people should be able to find their information about the new media art residency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, it was uh, Anna Maria Travničková uh, from Kair, the residency program. We consider uh, here in Košice one of uh, the success stories. Uh, in, uh, in this field. And uh, let me now come uh, to our, uh, our uh, uh, cartoonist, if we can have a look on, uh, on his work, how is it going on with Tora? Hello. Hello. It's going fine. <laughs> it's very interesting. So I, uh, if you can see yes. what I've... Uh, Drone. Yep. It's uh, you, Martin, and it's uh, Joanna and Rory, and it's about the movie from Nutodden about uh, lovers' benches and the lonely people's benches and how this um, uh, fundings, uh, different kind of fundings, and uh, also about uh, Kair. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know how it. Uh, it's spelled, but I, I know how it's spelled. Yeah, but, you uh, spelled it very well. You spelled very well, yeah. yes. So mm -hmm. um, so this is what I've captured um, until now. Great, great. You promised us to fill in the whole blank areas and you're pretty much yeah. done. Yes, okay, great. I've got Gre a little more space on the right side. Oh, <laughs> a little <laughs> more, okay. This will be for, uh, for uh, one not a big workshop probably, but um, I will have a look in the Slido. If you have any questions, please, uh, audience, dear audience, you can uh, ask uh, through Slido. And um, uh, let me just give you a few more information about the project we, 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 we are doing and implementing. And uh, you can watch all these uh, webinars we are talking here about. Uh, on the on the uh, YouTube channel of Creative Industry Košice and also on our Facebook page, we have we are also publishing in the framework of the of the project. Uh, we are publishing uh, articles in Invisible Mag, our uh, our online uh, newspaper or online magazine, as well as we are preparing the the. Uh, the post podcasts with uh, different uh, speakers we had in uh, in our workshops uh, from Slovakia or from Norway. So you will be able to find all this information as the project will go on. The project will go on for one more more months, and you will find be able to find all this information or on the web page of uh, Creative Industry of Košice. If you are a fan of our of our Facebook page you will receive the, uh, for sure the information about uh, the new podcast that we're creating in the, in the realm of this project. Yes, so this is the final workshop, uh, but uh, we, we set up all the project in a way that uh, there is no final in, uh, in our project because wha what we wanted to do in, uh, throughout the project is to, is to explore the opportunities there are between Norway and, uh, and uh, Slovakia in the cultural field. And as you could, uh, could, could see that uh, there is, for us, uh, it was, uh, Norway was, uh, terra incognita was an unknown land, which uh, we were discovering through, through art, through the cooperation with, uh, with uh, Urban Space Lab and Lori Vestal. Uh, 
and uh, it was very interesting and uh, our project is about actually uh, like uh, we always consider it uh, together with uh, with the lorry as a, as a as a founding stone for the future cooperation and for the future projects as i already said this was something that was very very important for us throughout all the webinars uh, we were organizing uh, i would like to now give floor to uh, to our partner from norway to lori vestel lori is a is a is, is a founder of the urban space lab she's a She's an artist, she's a landscape architect, and uh, she's very, uh, sh it was a great cooperation uh, we, we had so far. And I would like to ask you, Laurie, um, we spoke already about the beginnings, about your first thoughts when, uh, when you receive our email and you say, well, I don't know what people really think about uh, Slovakia, if they know Slovakia, if they know people here. But uh, if you could just wrap up or give your perspective on, on the project, on uh, what you also uh, learned maybe or uh, from, from our project so far. Well, thank you, Martin. I, I really was so happy to collaborate with, uh, with Tsike and it's been a wonderful experience. Um, I thought it was very interesting that we managed to find um, five and six different kinds of themes that we wanted to um, illuminate together. Um, everything from the newest thoughts about architecture and cultural planning up in Buda with Ginnist and um, to uh, humanitarian architecture and um, the work in uh, Kosika with the Roma people and textiles even for presenting to the Pope and then also the school in Kenya and how Norwegian architects are uh, doing that and um, I think the whole project all the way through with all of the different webinars, it has been so rewarding. And um, I thought it was particularly interesting, Anna Maria, your presentation of the residencies, and it would be very exciting to um, see if we could find some way to connect there. So thank you so much for that. Um, I think that one of the experiences that I have is that I really did know nothing about Slovakia when we started the project, and um, I'm learning, and there's still so much to learn, and I really hope that we'll have a chance to travel and connect uh, to actually experience each other's um, places and the possibility that comes when you open up a more international and global conversation about our places and what they mean for us and are also how we um, rejuvenate our old cities through art and culture and contemporary art also and the social aspects of producing art. I think the, the main thing that I wanted to communicate was this idea of the long-term interdisciplinary program collaborations where we um, go out in a wider way and create a conversation that crosses the borders between different fields to see what happens when we talk about the problems that our planet faces with sustainability and with um, social and, and economic environmental problems and if, if there's something that we can do when we have a conversation to actually find new solutions together that we wouldn't have found on our own. And um, Haida, I thought that uh, some of the, the funding that you presented might be quite interesting in this, in this aspect of solving problems together. Um, so I hope that we can keep a conversation going and that we'll get some interest uh, from both sides on that. Um, uh, I just, before I keep going, Haida, there was, I had one question for you. Um, when it came to the research fund, uh, it said scientific collaborations, but um, can you also think of the science of art or artistic research as something that would be research? Yeah, no, uh, the first one is, uh, it have three pillars, like, like I mentioned before, one of them, the second pillar is the one where uh, they have uh, different themes. One of them is so social and creativity. And uh, I forgot the last, uh, sentence of the whole it's like a uh, long sentence uh, where you can uh, do research and innovation when it comes to creativity and uh, to collaborate uh, uh, socially uh, mm -hmm. make the city better for example one of the in, in, in um, climate neutral city and yeah you can use art and um, culture there too so there's a lot of option in uh, horizon Europe Thank you so much. I, that was what I was really wondering about. Um, and then um, I think that there is a positive energy 
when you start to actually talk together, like, you know, I've never talked to Heidi before today, and meeting Anna Marie and Johanna from Nutroden, who wants to follow up, and, and um, then Sike with all of the different connections they have to artists. And I think this idea of the global conversation digitally that initiates interesting place projects is um, a wonderful place to keep going with our, with our collaboration. Thank you, Heide. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think I had just maybe two more points that I wanted to say, and the one was that um, there's a lot of positive energy in our project, and Sika is a very well-run uh, project and a very good partner to have, so I just wanted to kind of, I can't say enough how impressive it's been working together with Slovakia. I was really amazed at the, the competence level of everybody involved. It's very professional, very high, so um, I really think uh, Martin for following up the project so well and Marco and everybody involved. And then I also wanted to name the idea of, the, of living labs as a method that I think is quite interesting, especially in terms of research with um, living, uh, living things that we are uh, more than just people. We're a planet with different, uh, with different organisms and, and that could be quite interesting to work with living labs that way. And that, um, I think also the idea of Old cities with both Kosika and um, our area has where we have like Nutolden, which is on the World Heritage List. It's one of uh, an important city, and um, I think the idea of seeing how contemporary art can actually transform old cities is also an interesting theme. So that's that's pretty much what I had today, and um, I think that uh, the conversation will have to go on. So I'm really hoping uh, to keep in contact with. Uh, all of the people we've met through our project. And um, again, thank you so much for choosing Urban Space Lab as, as your partner. And uh, I can't wait to show more of the results that we've had through our collaboration. Yes, <clears throat> thank you very much, Lori. I think you've wrapped it up uh, very well. We really also felt that there's a lot of uh, positive energy in, uh, in our collaboration. and. Uh, it was very creative, as uh, it is. It should be when we have two organizations with creative people working together, and we hope that we will be able to um, to bring more in the future. And uh, that was the reason why we also included all these funding possibilities uh, uh, there are in uh, that we found in the in a, dur during our project. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to conclude uh, our final workshop we we have uh, today in the in the framework of this of this slovak uh, norwegian cultural matching uh, matching uh, uh, matching pardon, uh, initiative uh, we heard today uh, great speakers about uh, about uh, different funding opportunities there are for implementing uh, implementing the initiatives uh, the projects uh, between uh, slovakia and uh, norway in the cultural Realm. Uh, we were happy with Lori to to share uh, to share our own experience about how we set up our consortium, a small consortium, a small partnership, let's say, rather than consortium, and uh, how we we applied for the funding and how this funding uh, how we received it. And we have also included uh, the links of uh, of the funding instrument uh, in. Uh, on the Facebook and also in the description of the Facebook uh, event and also in the description of the YouTube uh, uh, YouTube stream, where you can find more information about the, the, the fund the for bilater bilateral cooperation. You can find the projects that are uh, that uh, were already realized either through uh, through this fund or through the program culture from EEA grants uh, program. They are in Slovak and in in uh, in, uh, in uh, English, so it can serve as a inspiration for for further projects. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Martin Mojis, Mojis and I work as a senior uh, project manager at the at the Creative Industry Košice, and it was a pleasure for me to uh, to guide you through these uh, last workshops. I would like to thank all of our speakers. Uh, oh yeah, and before doing so. Uh, Maybe we can have a last look at the at the gr design at the uh, of uh, Thor Erling. Thor, 
could you maybe your last word about uh, what if there is something new yeah, that the yeah. last words uh, or the last drawings is uh, Laurie talking about the positive energy when we talk together and I also made a little drawing of the link between all the people through their uh, different kind of, uh, uh, of uh, computers and um, and um, technical uh, digital things and uh, all, all the post positive energy that's running through it all. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Yeah, it's a great. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Thor, for uh, for your input in our workshop. We will. Uh, there is one thing we will uh, prepare uh, from the project. This is the is the final online publication, and we will be happy to to share in the graphics uh, some of your your uh, designs, so we can uh, we can keep them also in uh, this way for uh, for for the memory. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and um, I hope that we will see each other uh, in our next uh, projects. If you would like to connect uh, with, uh, with our speakers, please don't hesitate to contact uh, Creative Industry Košice or, or, um, or Urban Space Lab, and uh, we'll be happy to, to get you in connection so that uh, the cooperation between Košice, between uh, the cultural scene here and the cultural scene in, uh, in Norway uh, can be further fostered. Thank you very much.